Hello there. This context and applications question deals with calculus. In particular, it deals with the chain rule and you, you need a good knowledge of functions. So let's have a look at it and see what we do. First, we're told that an oil spill occurs offshore in an area of cam water with no currents. The oil is spilling at a rate of 4 by 10 to the power of 6 centimeters cubed per minute. Okay, now straight away, because it's centimeters cubed per minute, we know that this is a rate of volume uh, changing with respect to time. We can safely say that this is dv dt, volume with respect to time, and that is equal to 4 by 10 to the power of 6. And the unit is very important in this question as well. So we're dealing in centimeters cubed here, which means it's volume. The oil floats on top of the water. Complete the table below to show the total volume of oil on the water after each of the first six minutes of the oil spill. The scale here is uh, in 10 to the power of 6, so after two minutes we have 8 times 10 to the power of 6. After one minute we should have 4 times 10 to the power of 6, and with each successive minute uh, there's an extra 4 by 10 to the power of 6 centimeters cubed, so then after 3 it'll go up to 12, after 4 it'll go up to 16, and 20 and 24. Okay, so that's the volume. Now draw a graph to show the total volume of oil on the water over the first 6 minutes. Okay, so when time is 0 minutes, the volume is 0, so we can put a, a dot down there. After 1 minute we have 4, after 2 we have 8, after 3, 12, so it's a linear equation or a linear function and uh, and of course that rises as a straight line. So just join up the dots and we have the volume over the first six minutes. And next we have to write an equation for V of T, the volume of oil in the water in centimeters cubed after T minutes, so V of T is a function of t and it's basically 4 times t. Whatever t is, you just multiply it by 4 to get the volume. And we could say, well we don't need to say that it's in centimeters cubed, but we could. Next, uh, the spilled oil forms a circular oil slick one millimeter thick. Okay, so it's it's like a very very flat cylinder, uh, and the radius we we'll just call R for the moment from the center. Uh, write an equation for the volume of oil in the slick in centimeters cubed when the radius is R centimeters. Okay, well, when the radius is r centimeters, the volume, let's just write the formula for the volume, isn't it? Uh, pi r squared h is basically the area of a circle, which is pi r squared, times the height. You can also find the formula for the volume of a cylinder on page 10 of the tables. So in our case, the volume is pi by the radius squared by zero, hmm, one millimeter is 0 0.1 centimeter. Okay, so you'll need a good knowledge of units as well for this question. Sorry, one millimeter is 0 0.1 centimeter because uh, 10 millimeters is in fact one centimeter. Okay, so that's how to get uh, the volume. Let's write the volume a little bit better. So it's uh, pi r squared over 10, we could write. Because one tenth is the same as dividing by 10. And that's also um, centimeters cubed. So what we have here is a formula, I guess you could say, which has the volume in terms of the radius, the volume of the oil slick in terms of the radius. And if we wanted from that, we could get dv dr. Find the rate in centimeters per minute at which the radius of the oil slick is increasing Okay, so we're looking for the rate at which the radius is increasing. So that means we want dr dt. 
is what we're looking for. And we're looking for that when the radius is 50 meters. Okay, so 50 meters is 50 times 100 centimeters. And if we're looking for dr dt, we can easily find dv dr from above. We know that dv dt from the very start is 4 by 10 to the power of 6. Okay, and that's in centimeters cubed per minute. So if we want d, okay, let's just write out also dv dr from the equation above, which has volume as a function of the radius. Let's just differentiate that to get dv dr. And that would be 2 pi r over 10. Or we could write that as pi r over 5. And that would be uh, centimeters cubed per centimeter. Now, what we want is we want dr dt. OK, so let's just write out, using the chain rule, how we're going to get that. So we want a dr on the top. Uh, we want a dt on the bottom. And then we can put our dvs in here. And they will cancel out. Uh, and we will be left with dr dt. So dr dv is 5 over pi r, because dv dr is pi r over 5. And dv dt is 4 by 10 to the power 6. So that'll be over 1. And we want that, that is what dr dt is. Now at r equal to 5000, then dr dt is 5 by 4 by 10 to the power of 6 all over pi by 5000, which is, well, if you divide above and below by 1000, we would lop off 3 off the power, 10 to the power of 6, so it would become 10 to the power of 3. Uh, so 5 by 4 gives us 20 by 10 to the power of 3 over pi by 5, and the 5 goes into 20 four times. So our answer is 4 by 10 to the power of 3 over pi. And the unit for that, because it's a radius with respect to time, will be centimeters per minute. So that is the rate at which the radius is increasing per minute when the radius is 50 meters. Show that the area of water covered by the oil slick is increasing at a constant rate of 4 by 10 to the power of 7 centimeters squared per minute. Okay, so we're looking for the uh, rate of change of area with respect to time. So that'll be dA dt. Now there's two ways we can do this. I'm going to do the long way first and then show you a short way. So dA dt will be, uh, well, first of all, I can show that the area of a circle is pi by r squared. So that means that dA dr is 2 pi r. Now dA dt would be dA dr multiplied by dr dt. Because again, these drs will cancel. So this is another example of the chain rule at work. Uh, so that is um, dA dr, which is 2 pi r, and dr dt, which we have above, which is uh, 5 by 4 by 10 to the power of 6. over pi by r, and the pi r's cancel. And what are we left with? We're left with uh, 20 by 2, which is 40, whoops, let me go back to my blue, 40 by 10 to the power of 6, which is, of course, 
uh, 4 by 10 to the power 7. And that rate of change is in centimeters squared per minute. Now, another way of looking at that is if we think that dv dt was a constant, so let's just maybe um, put a line across here because we've got our answer. So you wouldn't need to do it twice in the exam, but I'll just say alternatively. Uh, another way of doing it is if we think that the volume, rate of change of the volume with respect to time is 4 by 10 to the power of 6, then area will be the same thing but divided by the height, if you think. If you have volume and you want to get area, you just divide by the height. You divide by one of the dimensions, the height being that dimension. So that would imply that uh, dA dt, the rate of change of the area, would be 4 by 10 to the power of 6 divided by the height, which is 0 0.1. And if you work that out in the calculator, dividing by 1 tenth is the same as multiplying by 10. So that's also 4 by 10 to the power of 7, if you multiply by another 10 on the top. Uh, so that's another way of doing it. And let's see, I think there's one last question. The nearest land is one kilometers from the point at which the oil spill began. Find how long it will take for the oil slick to reach land. Give your answer correct to the nearest hour. Okay, so I think we can use the rate of change of the area. Uh, if we think that, let's say, the oil slick started at a particular point and there's a circular area which is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And when the radius of that is one kilometer, that's when the oil will reach the land. We can use either dA dt or dV dt, doesn't really matter. Uh, dA dt is 4 by 10 to the power of 7 centimeters squared per minute. And the reason we can use either dA dt or dV dt is they're both a constant rate of change. So what we need to do is find what would the area be of the circle when the radius is one kilometer. So one kilometer is 1,000 meters, and 1,000 meters is 1,000, zero, 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 it's 1,000, plus two more zeros, centimeters. So what would be the area of this uh, circle would be equal to pi by 100,000 squared. And another way to write this is pi by 10 to the power of 5 squared. So that's pi by 10 to the power of 10. That would be the area of the oil slick, if you like, when the oil has reached land, which is one kilometer away from where it began. It would have to be pi times 10 to the power of 10. That would be the area. So we know that the area is increasing at a constant rate of 4 by 10 to the power of 7 centimeters squared per minute. This area is, of course, in centimeters squared, because our radius was in centimeters. So therefore, all we have to do is divide this big, fig big figure, pi by 10 to the power of 10, by 4 by 10 to the power of 7. And we get pi over 4. Uh, 10 to the power of 3, because you subtract the powers. So that is 10 to the power of 3 is 1,000 pi over 4, which is 250 times pi, and that's in minutes. That's how long it takes. Uh, so we just need to multiply 250 by pi, and we get 785.398 Now divide that by 60 to get it in hours. And we get 13.08, or 13.09, because it's 089, so 09 hours. And to the nearest hour, that is approximately 13 hours. So that's how long it takes for the oil to reach the land. 
OK, so that completes this question. It wasn't too long for a 50 mark question. The main tasks and tricks involved with this was using the chain rule and understanding that if you have a constant rate of change, uh, it's quite easy to, to work with that, in fact, because uh, every minute it's changing by the same amount. So in order to find how many minutes, you can just divide by, by that rate. And, and that's what we did in this question. So I hope you found it useful. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.